homepage. Okay. Of the number of people that came into this particular homepage, 10 million leads over this time period, 16% decided to go through on this particular page. 70 or yeah, or yeah, 81% decided to leave. Okay. What kind of response rate were we looking for at the beginning of the class? What kind of response rate were we talking about? 5%. 5% through the ads, 10% through the website to the contact form. Okay, so we're looking for 10% total to make it through the web page all the way to the contact form. That's the idea, is that we want them to get there and fill out the contact form. So this gives you a good idea of how many are actually going through that page and stepping through to the next one. It'll show you with these little trails where they're going. Okay, so... Uh, for, for these 82 or 86 instances of people, um, four made it to the about page, four made it to the contact page, you know, and once they got to the contact page, in this case, 75% of them filled out the contact form. That's 75% of the 16% that made it, or whatever it was, that made it through the first game, right? So, what do you do with this information? What do you do with this information? Adjust your website. You adjust your website. You make changes. You do testing. You see what works best. Okay, this is all about changing. It's all about adapting with the market. When the market changes, you better change your website. You have to keep up with it. Same thing with, uh, with if you're doing mailers or direct si or, or uh, banded signs. You've got to change to keep up with the times. This data is all real time? This data is real time up to the moment that I opened it. Okay. Right? So it's kind of like a snapshot at that point. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, so the way to, to test your pages and to get things better is by doing behavior experiments. I'm experimenting on people all the time. I love it. What I'm doing is I'm setting up different test runs between two different versions of a web page. And this data doesn't show a whole lot here. Maybe I have to pick one that actually shows something. Let's see. I set up experiments all the time on all the web pages that I run. Yeah, there we go. That's a little better. Um, what you're doing is you're saying, okay, well, I have I have this uh, this this page that offers uh, you know to buy your house. Okay, we'll call it version A. And then I have um, something that I should change on this page to see if it gets better response. Maybe I'll change the background color. We'll call it version B. Now, now that I have this uh, now that I have this tracking ID installed on my site, I can have people I can have Google randomly tell people to go to either version A or version B without them even knowing it. So it's going to show them whichever one Google wants to, and then they're going to report the results of how it went. Okay? So Google's actually helping you do the testing. It's randomly proportioning people to go to either of your pages, and it's going to report, in this case, how many people bounced. A bounce is somebody comes in and bounces right back out because they don't like it. Okay? So you can see here all the bounces that happened for the two different versions. There's a, there's a bounce here on March 20th, there's a bounce here, and down at the bottom it says, okay, well the bounce rate of version of, of the original version, version uh, of the original version versus the experiment, well that was 20% versus 60%. So which page is better? The original. The original. Because less people bounced out of that page, more people liked it. So I'm going to stick with the original and now I'm going to test something else. I'm done testing whatever I tested here. I know this works better, now I'm moving to the next test. And I continually set up experiments to continually test and evolve my website as, as I get people through it. Because I want to know what they like. Yes? You set up the experiments like different background color, just two different background colors. You do it through Google Analytics? You, no, so I set up the actual, uh, so I set up the experiment through Google Analytics. And uh, we, can, we can sort of do that real quick. Just create an experiment. Okay. And while that loads up. Yeah, so you give your experiment a name. Demo. Uh, you say, okay, well, in this case, I want to check for bounces. I want to make sure people like the site and that they stick there. Uh, I want to be, uh, I want all my traffic that's coming through the site to go through this experiment. So keep it at 100%. Let me know if anything changes. Um, and I want to make sure that the traffic that's going there is distributed evenly to page A and page B. I don't want just, you know, 80% going to one and 20% going to the other. Because that doesn't make sense for me. Next step. Put in the two web pages. Version A and version B. Okay? So you actually have to have two websites. Uh, two web pages mirrored. on the same site, right? Pages. Pages. Yeah. So, you know, timgreenleads.com and timgreenleads.com slash uh, home version 5 or whatever you call it, right? And it'll pull up the two and say, it'll, uh, it'll.
this out to two splash pages, is what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. Two, well, it can be any sort of pages. Uh, I test my about pages. I test my contact pages. I test my everything. He's got two versions of each of those. Two versions of each. Contact all the time. One, contact two. And I'm always changing them. Yes. Is that what they call landing pages? Uh, a landing page is a page that uh, you would drive a person to if you wanted to, them to give you your email, or yeah, give them, if you wanted them to give you your, their information for you to give them a product or register for something else, right? Mm -hmm. um, I don't like landing pages for people who are trying to sell a house because it's too salesy. I don't want to come across as a salesperson, I want to come across as a confidant, as a trusted advisor. I'm willing to help you solve your problem, trust me, right? Not give me your email so I can you know, send you this ebook and that sort of thing. Uh, so I don't usually use landing pages myself. But different criteria for different people, right? So, does this make sense? Yes. Do you find that a multi-page website like that works better than just a single page? Yeah. With your, all your, so you're creating a sales page rather than anything else? Well, yeah, if I understood you correctly. A multi-page website works better than a single page for people who are looking for a professional to do business with. Right. If they're looking for an ebook to download, single page. You know, if they're just wanting information. But if they're looking for a professional that knows what they're doing and can speak the language and says, hey, I'm here for you and I can, I can make it happen now, then you want to be credible. I mean, think about, you know, your, your experiences yourself. How many web pages that you've gone to, for instance, for like a doctor or something, where if they only had one, page, one web page, I mean, would you even stick around if it was a doctor? Or would you want to see that they have offices located here? Would you want to see that they've been in business for 20 years and this is about them? And would you want to see, you know what I mean? They have multiple pages describing who they are and their credibility and why you should go with them. Not just one single page, you know, that says, buy for me now. Okay. Like more categories of your business guy. If you find out differently, let me know. <laughs> Always researching. Yeah, Always I was going to say, do you base that on your opinion or are you based no, that on? It's based on research. On research. Yeah. But things are always changing. I'm willing to update my research anytime. Uh, we're testing all kinds of stuff all the time. I've been doing this for what, about three and a half years now, something like that. So, any questions on analytics? Is this really exciting or what? <laughs> yes. <laughs> love this stuff. You should love it too because this is this is the future of real estate. In fact, the future is here. Okay, if you're not doing this, you're going to get left behind. You already are left behind, right? So hopefully you guys are all on analytics. All right. So once the person goes into your web page and you've successfully got them to fill out your contact form, now you need to make them your buddy. Okay? You need to talk to them, build rapport, start creating, uh, start showing your integrity with them. So the goal of you have to have a goal for everything. You have to have the end in mind for everything. And the goal with email is to get them to, uh, to again, to accept you as a, as a person of integrity, as a person that knows what you're, that you know what you're doing, and to ultimately get them to accept your offer. Because you're going to be sending, well, I send my offers by email. I'll show you how to do that in a second. Um, you always want to personalize as much as you can. Okay, again, you're, you're, you're trying to create a friend. Okay. Hey Bob, I saw that you just sent an email or that, that you'd like me to send you an offer. I'm getting back to you right now. Tell me what you need. You want to offer them choice. You know, if you're going to, uh, if you're going to, uh, I don't know, what's a good example? Uh, a mechanic shop or something for an oil change, you want some choices as to what you can have done to your vehicle, right? Well, same thing with people who are looking to sell their house. And of course, you always want to test your different formats of emails to see what works better. You want to test every portion of the funnel. Always, always, always make it better. So, just a basic email. When they come in and they fill out the form, I'm going to send them an email back uh, instantly with the system that I have set up. But generally, you want to get back to them within you know, the first 5 to 60 minutes, as soon as you can. Get back to them with something. Even if you don't have an offer ready, just say, hey, I see you. I'm here for you. Let me work on it. I'll get right back to you. Right? This is just a very basic template. You know, thank you for contacting us. We're working to get you the best offer we can make. And to get you an even better offer, maybe you can help us with a bit more information. We're assuming your property needs 15,000 in repairs. Is that true? Do you agree? Tell us if it's not true. Hey, by the way, do you have any photos of the property? How can you help me out? Because I would love to give you the most accurate offer possible. Are they going to feel a little bit better about working with you? Probably. Right? Second offer. 
within six hours. People want fast response these days. Get your offers out fast. There's no reason you shouldn't be, right? And you want to send them multiple offers. Uh, with the, with the, the system that I have in place, which uh, Crystal's going to talk about, I have template emails that go out as soon as I fill in the numbers. Um, I have an email that goes out within 30 minutes of them coming to my contact page that gives them five, you know, four to five offers depending on their situation. Okay, I start with giving them a retail offer, which is full, you know, full uh, market price for their property. Of course, it's going to be on my terms. And then I'll end up with a cash offer, which is the lowest amount possible that you get for the house, but you get it now. It's cash. You want to do, you want to offer them choices. And you want to offer it to them in a professional manner. Okay. Here's a few options for you to choose from. Choose the offer that you like best, and you'll quickly, quickly receive more details on what to do next. Okay. People are coming to the website, and hopefully you guys are doing this too, or will be soon. They're going to come to, to your website. They're going to fill out the contact form. You want to get them an offer back as soon as you can, because if you don't, somebody else will get them an offer as soon as they can, and they'll beat you to it. Right? Any questions on that? Okay. If they don't like the offers that I send, because remember, only 20% of those people at that point accept the offer, well, I send them a, I send them a follow up, usually four days out, saying, hey, I'm still here. I've, uh, I've extended the expiration date on those offers. You still like to sell? You know, maybe you're doing some research and this is the best that we can do for you, or maybe we can do better. Call us. And then I'd also induce a sense of another sense of urgency if I want by putting in saying, hey, there will not be another extension. Because usually, if a person hasn't responded to accepting your offers uh, online anyway within a week, they've usually moved on to somebody else. It's been my experience anyway. So I will send a final off or a final email 30 days out, saying, "Hey, you know, I, I hope, well, hey, you know, we hope you found a solid, incredible buyer to purchase your property. If you have, congratulations. And if you haven't, consider coming back to us. We're still buying, and your property could be our next purchase. Leaving the door open, right? Maybe they have a buddy that needs to sell a house too. So the whole point is to present yourself as a professional and as a friend with solutions." What CRM system are you using to pay attention to where you are in that progression? Zoho CRM. And Crystal's going to talk about that. Zoho? Z-O-H-O? Crystal is the expert on Zoho. Are there any questions about the email process? Build report. Follow up. <laughs> quick response. Right? Be How professional. many days out was the fourth one? Was there a fourth one? 30. The one before the final? There was a four days out. Is generally what I do, and then a 30 days out. Because if they haven't accepted by the fourth day, then I'm moving on. How do you have a boilerplate email like that that just uh, has an autofill thing to it? Yeah, Crystal will talk about okay. it in just a moment. Yeah. Let me see. All right. Crystal? <coughs> Crystal is up. Sorry, you want to walk from back there? Um, for those of you who don't know me, I feel like I introduced myself. Um, my name is Crystal Little. I've been um, with the FRI now four years. Um, I've served on the board with Brian um, through the trenches, um, but I'm currently the Orange County group leader. Um, so if you guys are, this is my shameless plug, if you're not doing anything tomorrow night, there's the Orange County meeting, so come join us. Um, Where? It's out Mark Street at the Senior Center, or you can go to CFRI.net and all the info's there for you. Um, but what Brian asked me to come talk about is CRM. So I have a background in software. I used to work for a software company um, and led our development team there. Um, and so business process and automation is something that just is really exciting to me. Um, it may not exciting to other people, but I really geek out on this kind of stuff. Um, and actually, we built a, so a software, and Brian started using it so much that um, he was able to do more deals because you start to eliminate some of the nuances of your process by letting software do it for you. Um, it's kind of magic. It's beautiful, actually, when it all happens together. Um, and as he's been talking about today, what you should take away from this is you should be able to go home and start advertising, whether you end up looking at 10 billion leads or you do this on your own. But what's going to happen is you're going to get a lot of people contacting you. And the biggest problem you can have is having too many leads. 
And at that point, you need to be able to convert them. You need to be able to nurture these leads because they're gonna fall through the cracks and you're gonna miss out on deals because you simply don't have enough time in the day. Fair? I feel like most people are going to run into this problem probably right away as soon as you send your first ad campaign. And to that point, you know, I, I was, uh, I still work part-time at an engineering facility. I was working at an engineering facility full time. And I was doing all this stuff on my phone during the workday. I'd have to get, I'd have to get back to people on my phone. I'd have to do, uh, you know, comparables on my phone, look up all this stuff. Now the process automates it for me. All I have to do is look up a number, put it in the CRM, I'm done. It sends the emails for me, and I move on with the rest of my day. So it's really helped out quite a bit. Mm -hmm. so. so yeah, so I'm going to show you how our CRM works. Now I will say, um, you know, what is it? It's a customer relationship manager. So it's a software, okay? The funny thing is, is you're probably using one already, it's just not very fancy. Um, and what I say is, obviously you have integrated software, that's kind of the given, but even as simple as an Excel spreadsheet, where you're keeping a person's name and you got their phone number in there, that is technically a CRM. It's a very manual one, but it's something to aggregate all of your data into one location. Um, old school, like Rolodexes, um, your phone contacts, I used that at one point in time when I did sales. So all of these are ways for you to manage your leads. Um, problem is, is most of them are just super manual. So it doesn't really help, it just kind of allows you to organize. Um, that said, I went ahead and looked at, Brian asked me to um, kind of quantify some of this. And I want to do that for you. So here is what I consider the average investor. And I looked at myself too, how much time was I actually spending doing a lot of these tasks, um, and very basic, but if someone were to spend 22 hours per week, this is kind of where I feel like your breakdown of your tasks in like a group format is probably at. So you're probably spending five of those hours actually speaking to new leads, equal amount of time following up with old leads. Um, you should be spending that same amount of time marketing for more. And then writing offers, regular admin stuff, and then continuing education and things like this. Um, and of course, focus groups and chapter meetings. So this is what it breaks down to. So if you were to take that, this is what we're looking at. This is about the time that you're spending. If you see, I mean, some of this, you're spending almost a quarter of your time on some of these tasks. Um, this is where the CRM actually puts the money back into your pocket because you can eliminate some of these. So here's what I eliminate. When I look at the CRM, I, I look at that same chart and I'm like, okay, well, I gotta get rid of something because I need more time. I personally have a job. I have a day job. I'm sure there's plenty of people here who have day jobs too. Um, I like my job, actually. I don't want to leave. So in order for me to stay there, I need to create efficiencies elsewhere. So that's where this comes in. So two of the things that the CRM really does is the follow-up, okay? How many people here can honestly say you follow up with every seller all the time? Exactly. Most people don't. I mean, forget it if the guy's rude to you on the phone, you know, or is nasty in email. You're not going to follow up with that guy, but that doesn't mean that their position doesn't change a month from now. Um, but if you're not consistently following up, I mean, you're missing out. There's a quote by Jim Brown that the fortune is in the follow-up, and it's very true. Um, the other one is writing offers. I feel like, especially if you're new, you're probably second-guessing yourself. Am I offering too much? Am I offering too low? If they take this, I'm scared they're gonna take it. What can I close on it? You know, you kind of go back and forth with this whole idea in your head, and then you take the time, probably hours, to research properties and to do calculations and do them 10 times over to make sure your numbers were right. So eliminating and not getting and getting it off of your plate is such a huge time value um, that what you'll end up doing is wiping out over a third of the time that you're spending simply by using software. And I promise you, it is an accurate number in how that works out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna bring it up. I have it loaded here for us. Um, the CRM software we use, as Brian said, is built on Zoho. Um, you make sure I get the right browser app, so bear with me for just one second, guys. Um, but it's built on Zoho, you can access it anywhere, so whether you're on a web app, it comes with a mobile application, so it's really nice because you can actually um, manage this stuff. But what happens is you log in, and you don't have to go, who do I call? 
Who is my lead? Who do I need to work on? Who haven't I reached out to? You don't have to think about all that stuff because this is what this is for. This is to tell you, like in this one is a great example. We start off and I open it up and these are all the things I need to do. So I just start off in number one and work all the way down. And believe it or not, you're now creating a process for yourself so that you can have some checks and balances. How many people want to eventually step out of their business and let someone else run it and you just make money? Yeah, right. Okay. Everybody's two hands up on that one. You can't do that if you don't have systems. You just can't. It's humanly impossible. So being able to automate this allows for you to actually get to the next step in your investing career where you can bring people on. You can have a VA. You can hire someone overseas to do some of these tasks um, because they have a way to monitor it and you have a way to monitor them. So, super important. Um, the way that this all works, and I'm going to pull this up. So he talked about web forms. So what a web form is, you ever go on a site and you have to enter the first name, last name, all that stuff? Well, with Doho, it integrates right into the system. And I created one for you guys that I want to show you real quick. So this is just basic. This would live on your page. It would have all your fancy logos. It would have, you know, contact us, why you should sell your house to me. But the point is, is all you're going to do is fill out the information. Someone throw out a name. Bob. Bob. David. Where's your last name? David Bob. Bob. There we go. Okay. We're getting creative here, guys. And I'm filling this out on purpose. Um, you can start to set depending on kind of what you want. Um, whatever field you want in here. And I'm purposely using my real email address. So I want to show you guys. So all these are just questions you can start to ask. You can make it as robust or as simple as you want. His A-B testing that he was talking about, this is a great one. because you, Sometimes people think that too many questions is off-putting. Sometimes you need more information than just a first name, last name, and an email. Um, so play around with that. But um, always be testing. And then they're asking price here at the bottom. So these are the only like required fields that I have. Let me see if I can figure out this caption. So what happens is you get a little note, thank you for contacting, no big deal. So the user or to the um, seller, they've submitted their information. But what's really cool is what happens on the back end. So that comes through and now we can see, look at that, David Bob is now in our system. So it comes in, all that information he entered is already in there. You no longer have to do double data entry, so time saving. So they filled out the contact form on the website, for instance, and then instantaneously they're in the Zoho system. They're already organized and in the system, ready to go. Yep, and you were asking how do you integrate those merge fields, and that's what it is, merge fields. Very similar to like a mail merge that you would do in Word. This is how, this is how. You have to use the software, you have to use something that's going to pull it in. Um, but what's great is when you tie an email to it, that's where it becomes fun. Because those emails Brian is talking about, about that one day follow up, send the email within 24 hours, all of those are really important to do and really easy to forget. Okay? But when they have the email in there, it does it for you. So I'm going to show you. This is literally what I just sent to myself when I did that web form. So it says, hey, thanks for, work. Thanks for the opportunity to work with us. Um, well, you know, it pulls in the address, so you reiterate that back to them in case it's wrong, they can fix it. Um, but what I like and what I've actually found to work really well is this second area where we're like, hey, and by the way, do you have any photos you could send? Please send them on over. And the nice thing is you make this beautiful, like, greeting where it's a little more conversational. You actually get people responding. So a lot of people who teach like how to follow up and how to nurture leads, they'll talk about multiple touches. Are you familiar with you need to touch, you need to have multiple touches in order to establish rapport, you know, call people often. This is your first touch that you didn't have to do anything with. Okay? So you're now automating those, and the more you touch someone, the better rapport you have, the more likely they are genuinely going to trust you and possibly do business with you. So this is why we build these sorts of things in. Pretty cool stuff, huh? So, and then as Brian was saying, with the four day, the three day, things like that, you can start to choose how many times and how frequently you want to email someone, you want to contact them. 
instances where there's no email and it's just a phone, it's going to send you a task to say, hey, this guy doesn't have an email, you need to give them a call and follow up with them. So unfortunately, I mean, unless you have a VA, and we've had VAs too, where they'll do the call, and now you can say, now I need you to follow up with them. So that's how that all starts to work. Um, now, the other part, so you get the lead in, the information's right there in front of you. It's probably just basic preliminary information. Your goal is to fill in as much as you can. Um, I don't know if you guys watch The Profit. It's a great show. But Marcus Lemonis is always talking about if you don't know your number, you don't know your business. Okay? And in here, if you don't know how many leads you're getting in, you're never going to know what your conversion rate is. Therefore, you're never going to be able to improve that conversion rate and do more business. Now you're not making your marketing dollars work as hard as they should be. So knowing those different, like, the KPIs is what we call them in marketing, but on key performance indicators or what you're trying to get in order to ultimately improve those conversions. More deals, more deals in your pocket, less money out of your pocket to get them to come in. Okay? Uh, so... Once you've filled out information here, I'm going to pull up a record so that we can kind of move a little quicker on here for you guys. Um, here we go. So how our process worked is once a lead came into the funnel, it then went into a pre-screening mode, which signified for my VA to go ahead and fill in all that information because they didn't really want to do it. Um, so they would go ahead and research how many bedrooms, how many baths, you know, they would fill in the property appraiser link, things that can be done from anywhere across the, really anywhere in the world, uh, they fill that in. Once they fill that in, they send it back to me because now it's my turn to make the offer back out to the person. So this is literally one that they filled out. So I open it up, me as the investor, here I am. This is technically the first time I'm looking at this property. And it's all filled out, I have all this information here. I'm actually equipped to make an intelligent and confident call to my seller. You know, I'm not sitting there fumbling, trying to figure out like how many, you know, what's the what's the exterior? You know, it's concrete block. They even put links in there for me. So it's really nice so you can start to have that whole property sheet right in front of you. Um, in here too, we can start to track the financial components of the property. So we put in here what their asking price is, which is always a fun number to see compared to what it's worth. Um, this is value of this. You can, we put in rental rates. We do this on purpose because we want to see if we're going to give them a terms offer, like a payments over time. I need to make sure I can afford that. Okay? And that's another one that people kind of stumble on where they're like, well, I want to make a terms offer, but if I offer 500 bucks a month, is that too much? Can I actually afford to make that? And that's what this pulls in. Um, just fun fact, we use 40% on rentals all, always comes off the top. So that's what that is. If you literally just do the math, it's 40% off. Um, but that covers like your, your taxes, your fees, um, maintenance, things like that. So where do you draw that information in from? You enter that manually yourself? Yeah, or? the VA. The VA goes on Rentometer and looks and to see if the rental is accurate for that area. Okay. Checks a couple comps, make sure it's about right. I know it's probably personal preference, but yeah. you decided for your that whatever eight hundred forty four dollars. That's minus your expenses. You said no. Eight forty four is what this property would recommend. Market rent. Okay. Yep. After my expenses, it's five hundred six. Yep. So that's your NOI. Your net operating income. Okay. Um, another thing, so really important here, we have them calculate sold price per square foot. I have found. This is not a perfect science, so there's people out, you guys can probably in this room going, well, this isn't accurate, but it's like 90%. And in this business, for me not to have to do the work, I'll take 90%, okay? So what we have them do is they pull comps to see what's selling in the local area, and we use price per square foot on an average, okay? That's what that number is. What the system does for me is now it calculates my R, because all you're doing is taking that price per square foot and multiplying it by the square footage. Pretty simple. Again, not perfect, so when you get down to it, you know, check your costs, make sure that that's correct, but it's a good guideline. So here's what happens. Those calculations, those offers, and that, that time that you're putting into making sure that your MO isn't too high and that you're actually coming in, well, that's where the beauty of the system comes in. 
So I calculated my R of at 67,136, and right there are my two offers. So I put in like five grand for repairs, but um, it tells you with and without repairs. So if you're sitting on the phone, you can tell them, you know, I calculated about five grand for repairs, therefore my offer price is going to come in right around $38,000. And they go, wait a second, but I just redid the whole house. There are no repairs. All right, fine. I'll take you up for what you say. At that rate, now I'm at 43. And then you go and verify and make sure that the house actually doesn't need a ton of repairs and has a roof and all that stuff. Um, and then in addition, what we find too is that a lot of people like multiple offers. I recommend multiple offers. I mean, if you can give someone three offers, it's, it's the illusion of choice. Um, I use this in like um, consumer package goods and a lot of like retail space all the time where you know small, medium, large, and there's only a tiny price difference between them because they don't really want you to buy that one. They just use it in order to make another offer or another product look good. You do that same thing with your offers, okay? I personally usually throw in one offer that I know that they're going to tell me I'm crazy for because I need the other ones to look that much better. Okay? So the having those offers at your fingertips is where it comes in to be really valuable. Um, in addition, if a property has an email just like that email that said thanks for reaching out, you can also automatically send these offers off to them too. So you don't even have to send them an offer. Um, how we do that and what that ends up looking like, let me see. Okay, so this one doesn't have an email. I'm going to pull up one that does, so that you can see what I'm talking about. Um, so like that one has all the information filled out. And this is what the offer ended up looking like. So we come in, and our VA literally sends these. If they have an email address and it came in from online marketing, they fill out the information, and I trust her to send this out. And literally, she sends offers for me. I will tell you, I'll be very honest, the responses are not always nice. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, usually. However, it starts a conversation, you know, and we go back to those touches and, you know, reaching out to people. And even when they say, you're an idiot, I can't believe you're even wasting my time, that's the nicer versions of some of those responses, <laughs> um, it allows for you to say, okay, I understand what would be reasonable to you. And now you've started this back and forth conversation. Again, throughout this process, you're eliminating yourself and you're allowing for the system and for your people to end up running these leads for you. A uh, couple other things, like we bring in extra merge fields at the bottom. We give them an out where we're like, you know, here's the information we used to figure this out. Tell us it's wrong. And who knows? Maybe it is wrong. Maybe it's the wrong address and it's a digit off or something. Who knows? But at least it kind of gives them that opportunity to fact check the information that you have. So one of the other big pieces, and I mean, honestly, I could probably spend four hours doing this demo. This is like a fraction of what's actually built into this. Um, but one of the things that I found to be a godsend for myself is that final follow-up. So in here, when they tell you to go kick rocks, they're not actually a dead lead. They've just said no, not right now, okay? So you need to follow up with them. So what we do is we do a low pitch. Because I'm not done pitching to you until you've sold the property and no longer own it. Or you die. And then I just need to look from there, right? <laughs> um, so <laughs> there's so much truth. It sounds so cynical, but, you know, we got to eat, guys. Um, so down here, I want to show you, I did one, actually. Let me look her up because I want to show you what her up, she looks like. Sylvia. So Sylvia Costello, she told me to go fly a kite, and so I said fine. Put her in as a low pitch. What happens, that 30-day follow-up Brian was talking about, it does it for you. It does it based off of 30 days, and this is the email she's going to get. Um, his, is a little ver his is a little different. You can change all these to whatever you want. Um, but it's 
same principle. Thanks for reaching out. Hey, by the way, we want to extend our offer. Sometimes they're like, well, I don't remember your first offer. That's okay, let's talk now. You know, now you're getting that two-way, you're getting that communication, you're getting them to respond back to you. So, again, this does it based off of the system. You don't have to think about it. If they got an email, it's going to send off. It's really cool when all of a sudden someone responds to it and you forgot you talked to them. And now you're reigniting a lead that probably would have died because chances are you didn't follow up. You weren't going to follow up with them a month later. You're going to work on those hot leads that you have on your plate right at that moment, right? Um, so that's where this allows for you to kind of catch all those items that are falling through the cracks. Um, hey, Chris, are you not putting your phone on the brother because you don't want them to call you? I don't want them to call me, no. I have, again, I have a day job. So my investing strategy is probably going to be different than yours, okay? I don't want them to call my phone. In fact, most people don't have my phone number, like, even amongst friends, because, I mean, it can get kind of crazy when your phone goes crazy. So I try to make sure all of my leads funnel into my website. Everything I'm trying to push for is typically electronic communication, because that's what I want to engage back with. So some of those, like, targeting on Facebook and things like that, we also add in that we're looking for people who are, like, tech savvy. You know, I, I, that's the type of person that I want. Your audience targeting may be totally different, but there's some of the things that I do in order to get the lead that I actually want to work with. Okay? So, again, I can show you a billion different things um, on here and other, I mean, there's so much that it does. I like the visuals. I'm a visual person. If you come to the meeting tomorrow night, you're going to see like a thousand pie charts. Um, but this allows for you to see kind of where you at, or where you're at in the process, where properties are at in the process, what you need to do next, um, who's outstanding. This ready to make offer that allowed for me to know as soon as I walked in what I needed to do based off what the VA did overnight. So it was always really exciting. Um, any questions on this? This uh, Zoho CRM, how, how much of this comes out of the box and how much do you have to customize yourself? I will say Zoho is, a, is its own product. You can go to Zoho right now and buy it yourself, whatever. Um, it takes a significant amount of customization. I've been working on this system two years to get it to the version that it's at now. Um, Crystal's an expert at customizing Zoho, she and, she and Jason. Uh, they customized Zoho for me so that I could get back to my leads really fast with, with what I needed to. How much does it run? So. Um, yeah, it, this version is $40 a month for users, per user. And it's because it, based, it has all those time items, which you need. You need those. You need to be able to have the email send 4 days out, 30 days out, right away. Um, and that time allows um, within that user set, that license set. Say $3 a month? 40. Oh, 40. 4 zero, not three. <laughs> 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 nice try, though. Uh, yeah, nice uh, try. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's make a deal over here. Um, well, and a great question is how much are you willing to spend for good leads and getting yeah. back to them and profit sure. over? Mm -hmm. Sure. And the question and is how much, much would you, would you uh, yeah. charge us to customize the course? I mean, I will say when we, started using, hmm? when we started using it, we backfilled all of the leads that we had, we had spreadsheets and Google here and then a phone here and just sticky notes here. And we actually found deals out of that just sitting there. I mean, but when it's in a hundred different places and you've got to go digging for it, you're never going to find yeah. it. Question? I'm confused about, um, this is for like keeping track of where your people are in the process. And then if you use MailChimp to do mass mailings to, to people, I mean, how, how do the two relate? And how do you they integrate. They integrate. Mm -hmm. And Zoho also has a campaign that replaces them. It's like a MailChimp, basically, and it is actually better integration. So uh, it's cheaper, too. So if you have different segments, like in node investing, you have people that you want to market to for deals, and then you have people that you want to market to uh, to become joint venture partners. Like, can you segment all that and have different touches? Absolutely. We actually just did an installation. On, I just <laughs> literally did this yesterday. Did it on their final handoff um, for a wholesale company that has about eight users, eight uh, people in the company, and with them, they wanted to be able to market to people based off of like location. So if they got a property in Orlando, they want to send it to the people who are interested in Orlando properties. And then if they have you know, a property in Brevard, they want to send it to the people who are out on the coast. And yeah, you can absolutely segment out however you want with that, which is really nice. So yeah, and, but 
it's that integration piece that allows for that to happen. And you can create like a, they say that you need to make like eight touches. You start getting, you know, five to eight is where the, the real profit is. Exactly. So you have to create your own eight step process. Um, this out of the box, I have it built in with two. You can add more to it and it's really, really straightforward to add the additional ones. You can have 50 if you want. I took what Crystal that. created for me and I've added to it mm -hmm. since then. And I've updated things. And yeah. Getting the basic foundation in there is what was important. Okay. Yeah, but the out of the box, the one that we have customized, you can purchase that. And again, that's not what we're here for. This is right. a way to kind of just show you the options and how to make your business um, <coughs> more leads, more deals, really. Um, but it comes out of the box with all the functionality, just like this, that you see workflows, automation, alerts, all that stuff, reporting, tons of reporting. So it goes as far as sending out contracts for signature and things like that? It doesn't do the contracts for signature, and that's because of the legal requirements that go into electronically signing documents. Okay. Okay, so you do end up having to use like a DocuSign, a HelloSign, um, something like that, because those, are, those service providers are actually um, authorized and capable of having like the electronic, and you'll see it, you'll see like the document yeah. envelope IDs and stuff. Um, so, unfortunately, no to that, but it's, it's a legal thing. Okay. Yes. Can you speak to that for a minute? Because I'm kind of naive to how that works. I mean, the whole thing about you're sending an email and they have to sign, and you said these providers that, that are kind of, how does that work? Uh, have you, uh, I'm trying to think of the best way to try this. So, you, I'm sending an email, these emails are just a green offer. Okay? Right, right. And if they say, sure, I'll take it, now I need to give them a purchase and sale contract, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that is done. Those are done through electronic signing sites. Okay. Okay, DocuSign is a really popular one. Okay. And then you may use, you may use a far bar, you may use your own personal, whatever, okay? Mm -hmm. But that's what you're going to route the contract. And you do need to use those services because of the validation, the technology that they have, they legally, they're legally signing. It's a legal signature on those documents. And then so they email it back to you? It all happens this, it all happens like behind the scenes. Yeah. yeah, there's no emailing back and forth. They have to log into a portal. Oh okay. and like it grabs their IP address and makes sure that they're who they say they are mm -hmm. and all that gets imprinted on the document. So if you have to enforce that, let's say you now need to um, force them to perform, this is a legally binding document. There's more than one way to do that. Yeah. Uh, but we do it a little bit slightly differently where we send the offer out by email, they accept, and we send them a PDF. Go ahead and sign in with DocuSign, or you want to print it out and fax it back to us, yep. feel free. Do whatever makes you feel better. Right. Thank you. Back to us. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you guys have any other questions, it's, we're buttoned up against time right now, but if you have any other questions, feel free to email me. You can reach out to Brian, too. Um, he's a super power user on this stuff. He probably knows it. It's not as good or better than I do. Um, but, you know, we're always here to help you guys. And really the goal is so that we're all more successful. Because if, if we're all collectively more successful, then that means I'm successful too. So I'll think about it. Crystal, are you, are you doing your own company or are you merged with them now? Um, we partner together. Yeah. So if somebody just wanted this piece, where would we reach you? Just, um, I would say reach out to Brian. Yeah. yeah. Okay. My job. Yeah. It's my...
then you can get to the point where you're getting great results now for no effort at all. Okay, I literally like uh, like Crystal was saying, you know, my stuff happens. My stuff goes through Zoho. They come to my website. First they see the ad. They come to my website. They fill out the contact form. Instantaneously, they're in Zoho. It sends them an autoresponder email. Hey, I see it. I'm going to get back to you real quick. I'm on my phone. I find the dollar per square foot and a couple other idea, uh, values. Put them in there. The offer's out in 30 minutes. Okay? You can do it. It's there. It's available. Okay? So please go out and do it. All right? And with that, I want to thank you all very, very much for being here. I hope you have a wonderful day. Cool. Before you